Hey, painful mess here. Um, this is where my job gets significantly harder. The Book of Mormon turns into something sort of like one of these postmodern novels where there are tons of people and names to remember, and some of the names seem to be intentionally confusing, like Alma that writes the Book of Alma is not the Alma that appears in the book we'll discuss today. Uh, and there's lots of story within a story with side stories and they're interweaving with each other. Anyway, so I have to be careful and present things with enough care and detail that you can follow what's happening, but at the same time, not get so bogged down in names and places that it becomes unwatchable and incredibly long. But I can already tell this is going to be long because the book itself is long and I, I just... Mm, I, I should present basically everything that's in it. That's the point of this series. So we're on the book of Mosiah, and this is the first of the large plates of Nephi. Remember what was happening last was that Benjamin was king of Zarahemla, and he got the plates for safekeeping right at the end of Omni. Um, so Benjamin has children, and one of them is Mosiah. He'll he will eventually grow up to be the next king of Zarahemla, so he gets the records with the of the plates. Um, yeah, the records on the plates, sorry. Mosiah, uh, but before that happens, Mosiah gathers together people, the people of Zarahemla, so that Benjamin can give this long speech about serving God, and it deals with atonement and burning in hell and all sorts of things like that. So the standard fare for... Um, the stuff that's been preached about before. Uh, it goes on for several chapters. And then when he's done, he records the names of the people that will become pre priests to teach this word. So, uh, in other words, Zarahemla now has a bunch of priests to teach the word of God. Uh, Mosiah then takes over and everything is peaceful for many years. You then learn that a while ago, a group broke off from Zarahemla and traveled to a new place called Lehi Nephi, or sometimes just called the Land of Nephi. I think they are the same place, I cannot tell. Uh, Mosiah is wondering what happened to them, so he sends off a team to find them, and it's headed by a person named Ammon, and there's only a couple other people. It's a team of like four people or something, or five. Uh, they find these people, and Limhi is their king. So you soon learn that the people of Limhi are under Lamanite control, and they're, uh, something sort of like slavery is happening, and they're heavily taxed. Um, just, uh, they're under Lamanite bondage. And they also had a prophet named Abinadi that taught of the true religion. So... A little bit of the history of their people is told, but I'll skip that because it goes into great depth in a little bit about their history. Then Ammon teaches uh, the, pe the people of Limhi. Remember, Ammon's the person that led this group, found the people of Limhi living in the land of Nephi. Uh, he and he himself learns of the Jaredite record, which are on 24 plates. And we'll get to the Jaredite record in the Book of Ether. Mosiah is actually going to translate this. Um, these ancient records can only be translated by seers. So at this point, the concept of a seer is explained, and it's someone who can translate the, you know, they're given the gift of being able to translate something that's not in their language. Um, and it's told that having this gift is the greatest gift of all. It even surpasses the power of prophecy. So obviously Joseph Smith was considered a seer since he translated the Book of Mormon off of these plates into English. Um, and now at this point we jump backwards in time about 80 years to learn about what's been going on with this group that left Zarahemla. So the original group was led by Zenith. They find the land of Lehi Nephi and inherit the land from the Lamanites that are living there. Um, but then there's a huge war between the people of Zenith and the Lamanites. The king of the Lamanites is actually killed, and his people turn to false traditions. So since God is on the side of the people of Zenith, they win their battles against them. And then Zenith's son Noah takes over ruling in this land. 
Um, but he has he has many wives, and he's a wicked person. Again, um, polygamy is condemned in this chapter. Uh, and then he lets all of the people turn to evil. So this is where the prophet Abinadi turns up. Remember, that was mentioned already once. He wants to get the righteous out of this situation. So um, because of this, King Noah obviously wants to kill him. And then finally, Abinadi prophecies Noah's death and the destruction of his people. So he's imprisoned for this horrifying act. Um, there are false priests that um, that Noah, sorry, blanked out there for a second. There are false priests that um, Noah sets up and they pretend to keep the law of Moses, but Abinadi knows the truth. And then um, Abinadi is protected by this divine power and he just basically walks out of prison and no one dares touch him because he's glowing and things. Um, and he starts teaching again. This this mostly consists of explaining the of the coming Messiah. Um, again, all of the standard preaching stuff goes on for a few chapters. But then one one small point that is new that's mentioned is that that I'll refer to actually in my next video is that uh, little children have eternal life if they die. Uh, so they do not have to be forgiven of sin. Little children do not have sin. You cannot sin if you are a child. Anyway, uh, next there is this person Alma who writes down the teachings of Abinadi um, and then Abinadi is killed and burned to death by people who want him dead and he prophesies that they too will die by fire for burning him. And then because of this murderous atmosphere Alma starts teaching what Abinadi was teaching but he does it in private he organizes the Church of Christ, and it's complete with ordained priests. And then the probably the most important part is he starts baptizing. So remember, the importance of baptizing was presented in the small plates of Nephi already. And he does this at a place called the Waters of Mormon. And I've already shown you this picture once, but I will uh, quickly show it to you again. It's one of the pictures. This is... Uh, everything's backwards. There. Alma is baptizing in the waters of Mormon. So that's something I'm going to try to keep doing is whenever a picture appears, I will show you the picture. Um, and then finally, it is too much to stay around around the evil King Noah. So the they flee to the wilderness. So Alma and a bunch of people flee to the wilderness. Um, the Lamanites then invade the people of Noah. So remember, the people of Noah are these people that came from Zarahemla and settled, so they aren't really Lamanites. The Lamanites then invade the people of Noah and start killing, and Noah is then killed by fire. So Abinadi was correct. His enemies were killed by fire. Uh, then Limhi takes over as king. Um, so this is how it got to be uh, that the Lamanites have the people of Limhi in the land of Nephi in bondage. Remember, um, that was basically near the beginning of this book was um, Ammon comes, Limhi is ruling, and they're in bondage. So that's, that's we've basically come up to present point now. Um, so during this fight when the Lamanites invaded and killed Noah, um, these false priests that Noah had set up fled into the wilderness and were not killed, but they also are not living there anymore. Um, so one thing that happens is the daughters of the Lamanites actually gather in this secluded area to do a whole bunch of things like singing and dancing or something. Um, and the priests that escaped ab abduct the daughters and use the, them for their own pleasure. Uh, and then when the Lamanites realize that the daughters are missing, they assume it was the people of Limhi who are at fault, and they begin attacking them for it. Um, then Limhi asks the king why, why they're being attacked, and uh, when they realize their mistake, the king is actually apologetic and peace returns. So this is, this is when Ammon arrives, and Ammon arrives... Um, and we're still being told from the point of view of the, peop the people living in the land of Nephi. So Ammon arrives. Um, and then uh, 
Lemmy tells him about the Jaredite record, which we've already mentioned. Uh, and then... Um, but now that Ammon is around and he knows how to return to Zarahemla, the people of Limhi plan to escape the Lamanite rule by returning to Zarahemla. So they get the Lamanites drunk and they escape and they actually do return all the way back to Zarahemla. And this is, remember, this is where Mosiah is ruling. Mosiah is the book that we're reading right now. So that was a lengthy detour about the people in the land of Nephi, but recall that Alma had already escaped with his people into the wilderness, so he did not return to Zarahemla. This group of people is now branched off again and living in this other society. Uh, so the so we return in, in the book of Mosiah. Now what happens is we return to that group of people. Um, so Alma is serving as the priest, but he refuses to be the king. Um, and they call this place that they settled the Helam. So they're prospering a lot, you know, standard stuff going on. Um, but then Amulin, who is the leader of this rogue band of priests that had escaped when the Lamanites attacked, um, they start attacking Helam and they actually conquer Helam. So Helam is then subject to Lamanite rule, even though the whole point of it was to escape Lamanite rule. And of course, um, Alma is persecuted by Amulin because Amulin wants to keep doing his wicked ways. Uh, and so he and or their people are sentenced to be killed if they're caught praying. Then God helps them to escape to Zarahemla. So uh, now that Alma is at Zarahemla, he baptizes Limhi and Mosiah, and the people of Zarahemla become Nephites. The Church of God is prevailing throughout Zarahemla at this point. But after a while, unbelievers start to convince some members to deconvert, and then Alma teaches of the forgiveness of sin through baptism and repentance to gain eternal life. Um, more preaching happens. Uh, then Alma has a son, and that's right, his name is Alma. Very confusing. The son and the father are both named Alma. So this son and four of Mosiah's children want to destroy the church, you know, rebellious youth. Uh, but then an angel appears and strikes Alma the younger dumb. And the angel preaches to the children about why they should join the church. Um, and then all five of them repent and are forgiven after that experience. And then they start preaching. So Mosiah then at this point, Mosiah actually finds what's called seer stones, and he translates the Jaredite record, so um, we'll be able to read that later. And then he sets up a ruling system of judges rather than a single king, because a corrupt monarch can lead people into sin. Um, the head judge is actually Alma the son. And then the last main thing that happens is Alma the father and Mosiah both die, but uh, that's okay because... There's this ruling system of judges in place now, so um, Mosiah doesn't have to appoint some new king. And then that's the end of the book of Mosiah. So the next book is Alma, and it's much longer than the book of Mosiah, if you can imagine that. So uh, I may end up having to do that in two parts, because this one already is 14 minutes. Hopefully you watched it, because it's, it's actually kind of an exciting read. It's... Um, so maybe it was exciting to listen to, maybe it was boring, I don't know, stop watching these if you think they're boring. Um, but until next time, <clears throat> that's it.